Hey guys, welcome back to Blender 3.3 New Hair Series Episode 4 and today we're gonna cover the comb and snake hook tools. So let's cue the intro and get started. Alright, with that out of the way, let's quickly take a look at our model here. I've gone ahead and done some different hairstyles. I've also been experimenting with some geometry nodes for future episodes. So you can start to, you can already start to see some of the effects of uh, the geometry nodes I've implemented, but I'm not going to talk about it just yet. Let's just focus on the comb and the snake hook tools. To experiment with this, let's go into modeling mode, unshaded, what is this? Solid mode, yeah. Let's look at our comb tool and to experiment with this I'm gonna add a totally new hair system I'm gonna rename it goatee I'm gonna enter sculpt mode I'm going to add okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this but I'm gonna make sure that I set the size before I do the length is going to be two and we're just going to sort of create a goatee look and now that we have that, let's go ahead and test out our comb tool. And here we have the goatee. Now, how are we going to do this? First of all, comb tool is really simple. There is nothing much to it. Just like all the other tools, we have the radius and the strength setting. Both of these have pressure sensitivity if you are using a pen tablet. If not, bad luck. I guess you'll have to just uh, press the mouse slowly, I guess. I don't know. You also have the projected and sphere mode, which is pretty cool. Uh, we already know what those two do. And you can adjust the fall off, which you already know how fall off looks. And we, the only other setting we have, we have the stroke settings as usual. And we have the symmetry settings, which I'm not going to use for this example. So basically, the only real benefit benefit of the comb tool is to literally just comb the hairs like this okay uh, let's enable pressure sensitivity and let's sort of comb it now the way I have uh, set it up is because it's a sharp fall off it's really just combing mostly in the middle if I increase the fall off to a sm smoother fall off it will comb more I would say more to uh, Let's just put this in projected mode. I feel like uh, some of these hairs are a bit annoying. Now this is one example where projected mode might help in some circumstances, but there's not a whole lot of those. And there we have it. We've got this look down. Okay. And that's pretty much all I want to do. Great. And that's the, that's the goatee. Now add some density. Right. And we have a goatee and it looks terrible. The, all I really want to demonstrate here is the, uh, the comb tools ability. Now let's use the sphere mode. I feel like now is the time we should be using sphere mode, not the other mode. Very cool. We can even pull things out a bit. Doesn't have to be so rigid inward. Cool. That's pretty much the goatee. Uh, we don't need to um, edit this too much more and that's the comb tool very very easy now let's talk about the snake hook tool pretty straightforward the snake hook tool is a bit unique this is very similar to the snake hook tool in uh, the sculpting modes it's a tool that allows you to drag out the hairs like this for example this so on the setting side we have the same settings as the uh, comb tool because technically this is like a this is like another comb that just allows you to do some weird stuff check this out so for example we could do something like this we could you know let's increase the size of this we could inc we could just pull this out of it we used the projected mode we can do that and we could do something like this but there is a caveat to this that um, you need to be aware of and we use the comb tool again you can have a longer beard type goatee beard type thing there is a caveat and the caveat is the longer you keep pulling the hairs out it doesn't actually resample the control points this can be really annoying okay let me show you an example okay over here I have a very simple sphere and I have the uh, snake hook tool and some hairs that have been pointed now if i would just use the comb we can just kind of comb this and you can see that you know there's plenty of points now i've added this with simply eight points eight points is the default now let's just say i took the snake hook do you see what's happening now you, you start to notice that there are some cracks in the overall resolution. With the snake hook, what it's doing is it's taking this control point and stretching it out. So if you really see this, you can start to see that this control point and, and this control point, there's a very big distance between them compared to, for example, these control points, which allows us more bending here 
I'm less bending here. That's a problem with the uh, snake hook tool. Now if you're planning to use the snake hook tool and you're planning to drag hair out quite a distance, this is a bad idea. If you really want to do that, you can, but you just need to increase the point count. So for example, instead of uh, 8, you might want to have, like, I don't know, 32 crazy number, but let's just go with it small. Okay. Now if I was to drag this one out, this one would be a little different, you know, because we have much more points. But even this, at, certain, at a certain point, is just going to, you know, the same problem will occur. Snake hook tool really is not intended to be used to pull out crazy long hair like this. It's not really meant for that. The snake hook tool is meant for things like pulling out a little bit of a mustache to curl it up at the end. That would be the use of the snake hook. Just pulling out hair a little bit, just create a little bit of a tweak or a turn a little bit here, a little bit longer here, something like that. That's the, power, that's the purpose of the snake hook. It's not really to create a very long ponytail. Now just because just because we see it very jaggedy over here it doesn't mean that it's jaggedy okay let's go to the render mode okay and you'll start to see it's much smoother what happened well what happened was that in the render mode we have if you go to the render settings under the curve menu you can adjust the curve subdivisions you can just increase or decrease the subdivisions and this will smooth out your curve so you don't really need to worry too much about this the only real problem is that you lose control over the sort of bendiness of it. That's the problem. If you really wanted to, you you need to keep in mind of the control points when you're creating it. But don't use the snake hook tool to sort of create something really large. That's not its purpose. Okay, and we're back on our goatee guy. For example, this mustache is where I had used the uh, snake hook tool to just tweak the. Uh, the mustache a little bit longer and then I use the comb later to just comb it a little bit more into shape that's something you could do okay, that's that's one way to do it now this is not a great mustache nor is this a great goatee but you know uh, that's the best I could do in the hour that I had before I started recording this and so that's all for this episode in the next episode we'll cover the uh, grow shrink pinch and possibly some of the others um, because these aren't very complicated I'm going very slowly because I want to make sure that we cover each concept as clearly as possible before we move on to more and more advanced stuff. I'm also using this time to research uh, best practices for uh, the more complicated geometry notes stuff. That's all I have today. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.